Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Uh, my name is Courtney, and I'm here. I'm here on behalf of Nottingham Islam to talk to you about the second celebration in Islam, Eid al-Adha. <coughs> A hadith mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, "Allah has given you better than feasts, the Eid al-Adha. The Eid al-Adha." is the second celebration that we have in Islam. The first one being Eid al-Fitr, which means the Eid, the celebration after fasting in the month of Ramadan. And Eid al-Adha is the, sacri- uh, the celebration of sacrifice. Just like Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha is linked to one of the pillars of Islam, Hajj. <clears throat> and is celebrated two months after Eid al-Fitr. A brief history of Eid al-Adha goes back to Prophet Abraham, where we believe that Prophet Abraham had two wives and two sons. His two wives, Hajar and his second wife, Sarah. And his two sons, who were Ismail, who was from Hajar, and uh, Isaac, who was from Sarah. And we believe that uh, Prophet Abraham received a revelation from God that he was to sacrifice his son. And so uh, his son had agreed, and on their travels up the mountain to to fulfill the command of God, uh, the devil, or shaitan, or Satan, appeared to Prophet Abraham to deceive him. And so the... The history of this action is that the Prophet Abraham would uh, throw uh, <clears throat> what we would represent as stones towards the devil, and we uh, do this um, tradition, you could say, in our performance of Hajj. When the Prophet Abraham was to well, try to uh, cut uh, his son in sacrifice, he realized that the blade would not pierce his son's skin. And so, once he had gazed upon his son, he realized that God had replaced his son with a ram instead, and that God had informed Ibrahim, or Prophet Abraham, that he had passed the test. And this is a lesson for us, that we learn that no matter how much you love something, we should always try and fulfill fulfill the commands of God. Now, what is it that we do on Eid al-Adha? So, we would have prayed the morning prayer, the Fajr prayer, and either stayed awake or gone for a nap and shortly woken up afterwards. We would wake up early and we would go and take a shower uh, to clean ourselves. We would wear either new or our best clothes and we would uh, remain uh, or re- uh, gather around each other and make our way to the mosque. And on the way, we would recite a um, <coughs> uh, we would recite some words, which are Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa illa ilham, which translates as Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. There is no god but Allah. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, and all praise offer Him. Once we were inside the mosque, after 10-15 minutes, the Imam would give a short sermon. Um, sorry, before he gave the short sermon, we would pray two units of prayer, and then the Imam would deliver a short sermon. The short sermon would cover um, the acts that we should do on Eid, and how it's a time for celebration, and also not to take Eid lightly, and not to take Islam lightly. And that we should continue our good actions, not just for this one day, but throughout the year. Encouraging Muslims to be better Muslims and to help one and each other. And if we were what you call a Muslim country, you would then go out and you would sacrifice the, uh, the animal that you had, you, that what's called the Qurbani. And if not, then you would... In the UK, you would uh, donate, uh, give money to a charity who would do it on your behalf. And once the prayer had finished, we would usually stand up and uh, greet one another. Uh, regardless if you knew the person or not, we would all uh, basically embrace each other. And just to go through some lessons on Eid al-Adha, you see, 
It's a day of celebration ordained by God. Regardless of what you have, whether it be great or whether it be little, you should enjoy it and celebrate it. And praise God and enjoy the gifts and the favours that he's bestowed upon you. To remember that not everybody is as fortunate as you. There are people who are poorer than you and people who have less than you. And the qurbani, or the meat that we slaughter, a third of it will go to the poor. We also follow the footsteps of our Prophet Abraham as it leads on to the teachings of the final Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And just like Eidan uh, uh, Fitr, Eidan Adha, as I said at the beginning, is linked to one of the pillars of Islam, which is Hajj. Hajj is the pilgrimage that we would make as Muslims once in a lifetime, if you have the ability to, uh, where we would go to the uh, to to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Mecca, go to visit the Kaaba and do the uh, pilgrimage. Um, that's a little brief uh, history about what Eid is. And honestly, you guys are probably thinking, you know, well, well, that's Eid, but why do you guys do this? You know, what is it that makes you guys go and do these actions? Well, that comes down to our belief in Islam. And you could ask, well, what is Islam? So, Islam is where we believe in one creator who created life, sustains life, and has created us for one purpose, and that is to fulfill the commands of the creator. That we live amongst each other, but we always put our creator first. And what is the creator in Islam? It's one God, where nobody has the worthy of worship except our creator. The word Allah, a lot of people think that the word Allah means something separate to the term God used in the English language, but no, it's the same uh, entity. It's the, Allah and the term God are the same thing. And we believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet, and that he is from a lineage of prophets starting from Prophet Abraham. That's just a little bit about Eid al-Adha and a little bit about Islam. Thank you very much.